Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great Tuesday. Hope you're having a great work week so far. Hopefully, uh, some of you aren't even having to work. Hopefully, it's a short week for most of y'all as we're, we're getting really close to Christmas and we're pretty much rounding off 2021. And that leads into what's ultimately what we're going to discuss in this video is the weather the rest of the year, the next 10 days. We're going to talk about what we know. I can say with pretty high confidence what I think is going to happen, what probably will happen, and a lot of other people are thinking the same thing, and, and that's really what we're going to focus on. We're going to take a brief look into the first maybe week or so into January also, but we're really going to focus on just the last little part of this year. As we're rounding off this year, you know, I was thinking today, you know, it's been, so this year has been a really big learning experience for me, and, and thanks to you guys, I've been able to uh, talk with everyone and I've been learning as I'm going and that's thanks to a lot of people on social media who have also um, people who are more intelligent than me I mean let's keep it real there's a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me in the weather community and I take in knowledge from them people and then I apply it to these videos and give my own little spin and opinion on things too but it's been a big uh, uh, learning year for me and uh, I'm really happy with the way everything's turned out on my channel and things like that just we got really slow at work today and I was just thinking over things and, and, and really thinking about the future. But um, anyways, not to go get a little go way off on that here. What we're going to do, we're going to break it down. Uh, a lot of people or a lot of you guys are not going to like what I'm about to say here in this video. But keep in mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a lot of the whys in this video. You know, I'm always talking about potential, potential, potential. But I'm going to go into this video with a lot more confidence on what I think is going to happen in the next 10 days. So. Um, hear me out if you really want to know why we're going to be in this pattern or why we could potentially go into another pattern as we get into the new year. Please stick around and um, I'll break it down for you guys and uh, we'll get deep into this. But so if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like my video if you like it. I'm pretty much going to try to get to 9,000 subscribers here in the next 10 days. But I tell you what, I don't see anything crazy on the horizon uh, that's going to lead me there. So uh it's still been an awesome year, guys, so I appreciate all you guys. So if you guys got anything I can pray for, put it in the comments, guys. Let me pray for you guys. Let others do the same thing, and uh, let's all look out for one another here. Also, there's a way to join my channel. I promise you I'm going to get some perks, if you will, uh, starting off in starting off in 2022. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Sorry for that little pop-up. Uh, I guess I pushed something I wasn't supposed to. So let's get going into this. Uh, let's not delay any further. Um, what we're going to start this off with a little bit different. This is the heights, shows lower heights um, and uh, uh, higher heights. And to to narrow that down for you guys, what we're looking at is troughs and ridges. So um, there's something called an EPO, an NAO, and a PNA, and then there's an AO. And I'm going to talk about what that you know them acronyms mean here in a second. But this is an NAO right here. This is an EPO right here. We're talking about the um, Eastern Pacific uh, Oscillation. And then PNA is right in this area. So basically, if you have troughing or ridging in the Western US, and this symbolizes if you have troughing or ridging ar around Greenland. And then the, neg and then the EPO uh, symbolizes if you have any sort of troughing and ridging. Troughing means cold fronts. Ridging means uh, a ridge of high pressure. Uh, so troughing means colder than average, pretty much. Ridging means warmer than average. So, you know, when you see these, it, it, a, a good way to look at this is when you see these reds and these real whites and like a hot, like a hot white color right here, those are, think of that as warmer than average temperatures. You see the obvious cooler colors, think of that as cooler than average temperatures. Um, now, that's not exactly what this means, but you can look at it in that way. So, what we have here is we have a negative EPO, which means you have ridging over a portion of Alaska. Now, the islands, the uh, Aleutian Islands, hopefully I said that right, Aleutian Islands, Aleutian Islands here off the tail end, uh, the tail of Alaska here. This is positioned over those islands. So it's not a ne necessarily an ideal negative EPO that you want to see. You would like this thing to be situated and this is current. This is this is right now. You had these dual blocking scenarios right now over Alaska, portions of Alaska and Greenland. So I'm about to go over the next 10 days here in a second. Um, you would like this to be over Alaska if you want this cold air to dump to the east. Um, now, there's a lot of other factors. Now, I want to mention uh, you, you can get so deep into this. Um, 
you know, MJO is so deep, you know, whether what kind of convective activity do you have in the Western Pacific influences um, what what pattern you have in place as far as the EPO, NAO, PNA. Uh, but we're not going to get that deep into it because to be honest with you, I'm still learning that. I know the, the, the tip of the iceberg information, but uh, we're not none of that really matters too much. So we're going to talk about this. So as we're going here in time. Uh, if you don't know what day we're at, look at this. It says WED stands for Wednesday. Most people know that. And then DEC 22, 2021. So this is getting in tomorrow. So watch this. This is ridging in the western, um, basically still a little bit of ridging in the central and western U.S. Uh, this gets knocked down very quickly. And it's because um, when you have dual blocking like this, Blocking over Greenland as we're getting into Friday and blocking over portions of Alaska. It allows for cold air to get dislodged from the Arctic, and that's exactly what's happened here. So when I'm talking about dual blocking, that's actually a good um, a, a good platform, a good, a good first step to get a cold pattern somewhere in the U.S. But PNA... You know, or do you have a negative PNA or a positive PNA? A negative PNA means you have troughing in the west, which normally would mean that you would have uh, ridging in the east, which is not what you want if you want cold air. And that's what happens here as you get into the weekend. You have this Arctic air mass that unloads into the Pacific Northwest and uh, Western Canada. I mean, this is this is deep cold air, and then gets reinforced big time blocking here, and you're thinking. Man, we got these two working, but unfortunately, and I really think it's because the position of this uh, negative EPO, the blocking, is is further west. If it was, like I said, if it was more right here, and then you didn't have so much of a west biased negative NAO, which means the blocking is more centered over western Greenland. If it was maybe more a little bit more east, maybe this cold air would get dislodged a little bit more east, but it doesn't. So you get a big time Arctic trough that dips into the Pacific Northeast just in time for you know the holidays um and this brings well below average temperatures to the um to the western u.s at the same time you have a big time southeast ridge flexing in the eastern u.s the southeast um the only thing that's really saving portions of the northeast is just um some uh some some cold fronts that are dipping down that's cooling y'all down um what this means is you're likely going to get well above average temperatures at certain stretches all the way through the new year for the southeast and the eastern U.S. and the mid-Atlantic. And even when it looks like it's about to go away, maybe this colder begins to bleed east, move east a little bit. Then the southeast ridge flexes again. And this is the EPS, too. This is the, Europe, this is the EPS operational run. I mean, not operation, the ensemble run. So it's not like we're looking at an operational run. I mean, this is the reliable information. So we're getting all the way into New Year's Eve. And I mean, the ridge is just as strong as ever. And all the cold air is just as strong as ever in the western U.S. So that means places like Seattle, Medford, Portland, uh, the Sierra Nevada. Um, I mean, well, obviously Sierra Nevada. But you're, you're going to get like snow um, snow levels dropping all the way to the floor to sea level. Um, so that means places like Seattle are likely going to start to turn all that. These storm systems, um, they're eventually going to shift to some snow for areas that don't see a lot of snow. But when you have such a trough digging here, you have storm systems that are riding this trough and slinging moisture into the western U.S. And uh, yeah, and at the same time, the eastern U.S. is just very, very warm. Now, we've stayed a long time on this panel. Um, let's go on and look at what that looks like as far as temperature anomalies. These are temperatures compared to average. Um, so basically, you see the blues, the greens, especially the greens. You, you know, you look at the graph here, you're getting the greens, you're starting to get negative five. Um, you're starting to get five, six, seven degrees be um, below average. So whatever the average temperature is. So you're going to get a quick shot of cool air just before Christmas for the southeast. But after that, you're going to get some cold mornings here the next couple mornings, you know, in the eastern U.S. But after that... Look at these well above average temperatures that start to dominate the central U.S., not just the eastern U.S., but the central U.S. too. And then the Arctic hounds begin to drop on the eastern U.S. It is extremely cold for areas in western Canada. And then this basically, this negative PNA, which is a, which is basically troughing in the west, not just troughing, but an Arctic air mass. And it's because you have blocking up here. 
um, gets dislodged from the Arctic. Therefore, you get extremely colder than average temperatures to drop into the that drop into the uh, Pacific Northwest and the Western U.S. And at the same time, this is all the way through the rest of the new year. Look at this well above average temperatures dominating the southern, eastern U.S., southeast. And I'm, I'm talking about temperatures probably um, the last week of um, December, probably ranging in the highs in the 70s, lows in the 50s and 40s, springtime temperatures for the southern U.S. And, and you know, obviously... A little bit cooler for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, but but still. I mean, if you look into GEFS, it's the same scenario. Well above average temperatures dominate the pattern all the way through the next 10 days, which takes us to New Year's Day. And then you got below average temperatures right here. Now, this isn't like a wholesale trough. A lot of the colder than average temperatures are going to be confined to the Pacific Northwest. Um, so... You know, the central U.S. and the eastern U.S. are going to be well above average. So it's not like a trough. Uh, sometimes a negative PNA will dip down and then it'll affect areas, more areas of the, mid, of the Midwest, but not this one. So if we look at the operational GFS, um, the one that just ran, what does this look like as far as temperatures? Well, you're going forward here. You're getting this is Christmas Day, potential high temperatures Christmas Day. Um, you're getting into the 80s. Um, in Texas, uh, 60s for the Carolinas and, and 70s for, for basically the Deep South. Um, 70s almost reaching as far north as Illinois. In fact, they might. you got this Arctic boundary that sets up here, and you're thinking, man, is this about to unleash? No, it's not. Um, this might temporarily bring a cool day um, as you get into early next week. Um, but all the cold air stays up here. So if you're in the upper Midwest, it stays cold and around average. Um, but as we're getting into Tuesday, the 28th, the next week, look how warm these temperatures are across the south. Now, across the northeast, it stays cool. But compared to average, I mean, it's still actually warmer than average. And then you get, you know, you're starting to get into, you know, day eight, day nine. And this cold air start to kind of bleed east as we're getting into the last couple days of the year but but it's still it's not it, the southeast ridge is not allowing for this arctic air to dip down it's not uh, and it's the southeast ridge is very stubborn and then look how cold it is in western canada i mean that is unreal i mean negative 30 negative 40 degrees just north of the montana canadian line there um and I mean, highs in the 70s as far as the eye can see. I mean, and finally, maybe as you get into about 10, 11 days out, finally, finally this colder begins to bleed east a little bit. But by then, it's probably going to be moderated some, meaning it's not going to be as intense. But it could knock us back down to normal temperatures as we get into the first week of January. But still, that's so far out, it's hard to take serious. It really is. It's... Once you get 240 hours out, it's, I mean, he might as well, it's just a, yeah, it's just a toss up. So what we're going to look at here, and this is the, uh, the EPS, and this is basically the EPO forecast. So this stands for East Pacific Oscillation, and that is what I was talking about right up here, um, with Alaska here. And you notice it, it stays negative. You look down here, it stays negative all the way through the rest of this year. And then the first, you know, several days, they're basically through the entire forecast area. It stays negative. So that's good news. That means that there's still going to be blocking near or around Alaska. Now, the positioning of this blocking isn't very favorable, but there's still blocking up there. So we're keeping the dual blocking through the next 10 days. We are. So it's staying there. How long is it going to stay? Now, you look at the... This is called the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is the NAO. The NAO stays negative too. Now, here as you get into the first week of January, it starts to get very close to the neutral zone, but it stays negative. So you still keep the blocking right into here. That's good. Um, but the thing that's killing us right here is the PNA, which is Pacific North American Pattern. It is stays not just negative, but real negative. Now, towards the end, as you get into the first week of January, it starts to get decently close to neutral, but still stoutly negative. And when you have a negative PNA, that means all your cold air is dipping out west. 
and you have normally ridging in this east southeast so you need all you need it's it's not like you just need two to tango here you, you need all three and then there's the ao which is the arctic oscillation but that's actually favorable too and i'm not showing that but um you it's like you got two out of three you know right here but uh, this is not going to work obviously you had the dual blocking on top, which dislodges the cold here into the lower 48, but it's all dipping out west, all of it. So you guys out west, um, y'all are loving it. So what happens here is this is basically a 200 millibar wind stream, which is basically telling us where the jet's going to be, which is basically all these uh, more colorful colors like the yellows, the oranges, and the reds, the colorful colors. Y'all know what I mean, the brighter colors here. Uh, that is basically where your storm systems are riding. So with this... Big time trough digging down here over the west. You see these streamlines and they're bowing out and then they're coming right here. What happens is, is these low pressures dip down here and then they're funneling into the coastal California. Upper level lows are going over, you know, uh, Oregon and Washington. So you have storm system after storm system funneling here. And then as you get into a couple of days after Christmas, this jet rides a little bit closer to the northwest line. So then you're starting to get more moisture closer to Seattle with the cold air in place. And uh, yeah, so I do see an active pattern also for the Northeast. I really think that y'all are going to stay active and just cold enough, maybe for Boston, for these systems to be flirting with rain and snow. Um, you know, the northern areas of the Mid-Atlantic, I think y'all are, it's, if y'all get anything wintry, it'll be kind of like a, a wintry mess to rain or something like that. That's what kind of patterns here. But anybody in the Mid-Atlantic points south to the southeast, the deep south, and the south central U.S., no. This is not a pattern for wintry weather whatsoever. Um, I mean, you can even see it, the jet riding north of the southeast. Um, it's just not going to cut it. And in response to all these low pressures riding over the jet, you're getting, and this is through 10 days, and this is the EPS of Sommels. This isn't on a crazy operational run, but you're getting these crazy snowfall totals this year in Nevada, getting several feet over the next several days. And then you have snow making it all the way to the to the floor of these valleys like Seattle, Medford, Portland, uh, where it's well below 1,000 feet here in the next several days around Christmas and after. Um, you need to get more Arctic air entrenched. You guys are going to be switching to, from your rain to your snow. You look at over the next... 10 days. This takes us all the way through the new year, basically. Um, you can tell. You can tell where these systems are shooting across and where the jet's going. It's bowing out here and going through here. And then on the northern side of this jet, where there's moisture flying around, you're getting consistent snows. For example, Minneapolis up here through the Michigan, uh, uh, you know, peninsula, if you will, the northern part of Michigan. Um, and then Maine, this is a decent, a decent pattern for you guys. But when you start to get south into southern New England, point, and then, uh, you know, into the southern areas of the northeast, if you will, the pattern starts to go to crap. It really does. So National Climate Service uh, Center in six to 10 days, 10 day out. This goes from basically the 27th through the 31st, which takes us through the new year. Well below average in the west, negative PNA. Well above average in the south and to the eastern U.S., uh, but, you know, with your persist persistent um, close enough trough digs, you know, way up here in northern New England, you guys might stay around normal. Um, but the southeast ridge is very evident here, and uh, it, it's not good. And, and, you know, it shows up very well here, this negative of EPO that's more um, west biased. It shows up very well here, you know, above average temperatures right here with this blocking and this ridging is right on. But it's a little bit below average in Alaska where um, it's a little bit away from the blocking. So you can see it very well here. It really can. It all it all adds up. And then you go the 29th through the 4th of January, well above average still here, well below average, still out west. So, um, yeah. The MJO, I haven't spoke much on this, but I will tell you that phase seven is okay for January standards for the southeast as far as uh, wintery weather. It, it, it's pretty good for the eastern U.S. in general. Phase eight, 
to one, which is right here, is really what you need for the southeast as far as wintery weather. You really do um, for January. Um, but it looks like it's going to eventually get the phase seven. But uh, how how much does it get delayed? You know, we're, we're talking about this um, weather, you know, and, you know, I was, you know, a lot of people have been mentioning that, hey, they think that eventually, um, a lot of people were thinking maybe the last week of December coming up was going to be a time frame with a pattern flipped, but it's getting delayed. And one thing that I've always said, guys, and I hate to say it because I'm just being real with you guys, but delayed in the weather world and normally means denied and normally means it doesn't happen. I watched it happen firsthand and that Arctic blast that hit in the February, February of this year that, you know, did you know did all that damage not damage but it did a lot of harm to a lot of people in texas and surrounding states um if you go back and watch my videos which i actually did uh this morning a little bit while i was getting ready for work um that arctic blast was actually originally forecast to hit the southeast but it moderated it backed up more and more and then eventually it dumped all out west well west west more western areas the southeast and then over texas and the midwest and then the Southeast Ridge flexed its ugly head um, here in the Carolinas and Georgia. And we just got roasted while two two or three states away was in an Arctic air mass getting snow, sleet, and freezing rain. So there's a lot to figure out. A lot of people want to go and cancel winter, but you can't do that. Can't do that, guys. We, you know, especially I can speak from my area in the Carolinas. We get some of our best storms in late January and certainly in February. You always dream for that perfect scenario where, you know, you can get a white Christmas. But let me tell you guys, it's just not realistic these days. It'll happen again one day here in the South where we'll get a miracle pre-Christmas. or It just happened a few years back in 2018. Um, but that's all I got, guys. Uh, longest video in a long time. But I just wanted to discuss what was going on because there's more to it than just flipping through models. Um, and uh, I'm learning with you guys, and uh, I can't wait to finally have a storm to talk about for all of us, one that we can enjoy, one that's not, um, hopefully it's not like any kind of significant ice storm, but one we can really break down, talk about, and I'm really looking forward to it, sharing my excitement with you guys um, with that, because let me tell you, you're going to see a different Mitch uh, when they start dropping them winter storm warnings from my area, I tell you that, but God bless all y'all. Uh, to get, be with y'all tomorrow. I'm not, I have no idea what we're going to talk about tomorrow, but we'll see if there's any changes in the models. Y'all have a great night.